Hello, my name is Emily and welcome to my very first YouTube video. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know how to film and I don't know how to edit. I'm just hoping I'll turn into Emma Chamberlain overnight, but uh, that's probably not gonna happen. So here we are, trying our best. Um, I figured the best thing for me to start with would be to talk about why I'm in a wheelchair because that is a question that I get asked every single day, whether it be by strangers on the street, to Instagram followers, to acquaintances, even to friends that I've known for months who have just gotten up the courage to ask. Uh, it's something that I am constantly answering, so I figured I should just put it on the internet. Why not? <laughs> um, I do want to quickly address that I am going to be speaking about a car accident, I'm going to be speaking about death, and I'm going to be speaking about surgeries and hospital stays. So if you are uncomfortable with any of that, I would suggest clicking off. Otherwise, here's my story. Um, it was about five and a half years ago. On New Year's of 2014, I was in the backseat of a car with a drunk driver who ended up speeding at 60 miles per hour through a stop sign straight into a tree. A very big tree. Um... When we crashed, I quickly took my seatbelt off, uh, tried to open the door, and froze. Um, I thought that we had just gotten into a little fender bender. Uh, that was not the case. Um, when I froze, I looked to my right at my friend sitting next to me and quickly realized that he was not going to make it. Um, I knew that I could not help him um, because it just immediately by looking at him I knew that he was dying and everything inside of me wanted to comfort him. I just wanted to reach out and just touch him or say something but my body wouldn't let me because what I didn't know at the time was that I was also dying. My body was in so much shock that I physically could not speak or move. I couldn't do anything. All I could do was watch helplessly as he took his last breaths. And as he did, the driver of the car started screaming like a blood-curdling scream. So I look into the front seat and I notice the windshield is completely shattered. And then I realize all the airbags are out in the whole car. And then I'm like, fuck, this is serious, this is a terrible, terrible accident that we've been in, this is a really big deal, then I must have passed out, because the next thing I remember, I was waking up, laying in the back seat, um, by myself, there was no one else in the car, I could see the front seat, I could see there was no one up there, there was obviously no one in the back, because I was laying on both seats, um, I just tried my best to make some noise. I could not move, couldn't, just couldn't move at all. I couldn't speak, but I could make some noise, which I did. And thankfully there were paramedics outside of the car. And one of them said, you know, there's a girl in the car, help me get the girl out. They couldn't get to me from the driver's side, which is where I was sitting, sitting behind the driver. Um, so they had me, they told me to reach for them so they could pull me out by my hands. So I took every ounce of strength inside of me to barely reach my hands up above my head so they could reach them and pull me out. But my legs were pinned between, from the uh, crash, the driver's seat had gone backwards and pinned my legs between his seat and my seat. So I was stuck. So when they pulled me, the pain was so excruciating that I just remember screaming and passing out because it hurt so bad. Then I'm waking up in and out of an induced coma in the ICU for, I believe, 10 days. Um, they kept me in an induced coma because my, my injuries were so extensive that they had to keep going in to do more surgery on my stomach and my back. Um, in my stomach, my spleen had burst, so they removed it. 
my liver was lacerated, my uh, ureter got ripped from my kidney, my small and large intestines were both damaged, so they removed parts of both of them. I had broken almost all of my ribs. I had broken, I believe, my right foot and then toes on my left foot. I had burns on my neck and on my waist from my seatbelt, and I had broken my spine. And just barely, I mean, barely ripped my spinal cord, like the tiniest little tear. But that tiny, tiny tear caused me to be paralyzed from the waist down. And it's irreversible. You know, a split second and a tiny little tear has changed my life forever. Um, when I finally woke up and they took the tube out and everything and I could speak, um, I remember asking what's wrong with my legs because I knew, I knew something was wrong, um, but the whole, I spent a little over two months in the hospital, and it was all kind of a blur, and I, I was fine with, I was totally fine with it, I was like, I'm, like, barely alive, and I have tubes coming out of my neck and out of my sides, and I, and I have a huge gash in my stomach, my back is split open, and it's fine, I was like, it's totally fine, because I was super drugged up in the hospital, and and when you're in the hospital, yeah, you're hurt. That's, that's what the hospital's for. It's for being hurt and getting better. Um, I didn't realize the seriousness of my injuries while I was there. I spent my 19th birthday in the hospital, which is January 26th, so I'd spent 26 days already in the hospital. I remember around my birthday, I had to get a blood infusion because I was still dying <laughs> almost a month later. I was still not good. I was not in the clear. I was really messed up. Um, and it's just, you know, it's been an ongoing thing. Well, when I was in the hospital, my stomach had gotten, um, when you have... Uh, internal injuries like that they leave three little holes open so that infection can spread out while you're healing mine accidentally got ripped into one big hole so I had this thing called a wound vac which is like a big sponge in your open wound with like a vacuum tube attached to it horrible fucking horrible um I just I don't know it was so surreal and so horrible and it all happened in a split second and just from a poor decision in a split second my life has changed forever and my life is still hard every day is way more difficult than I lead everyone to believe um I can get more into that in a different video I'll leave some questions below about my like my life in a wheelchair and I will totally answer them I'm very open um, I want to spread awareness to, you know, drinking and driving. It's not worth it. Call an Uber. Don't be stupid. If it happened to me, it can just as easily happen to you. This one night, this one second killed my friend and paralyzed me for life. And now the driver has been in prison for a few years now. All because of a bad decision. I just wanted to address this and, you know, be open and honest with you guys and let you know that I made a mistake and my friend made a mistake and a lot of people are paying for it and it's not worth it. So I just want to say, be safe, please. <laughs> um, you know, tell someone you know about this. Um, you know, they don't have to watch the video, but just, just tell them, you know, this girl went through this because of a drunk driver. It's very serious. So, I don't know. I just want to, just want to make people aware. I'm just here to tell you guys, don't be like me. <laughs> be safe. Um, yeah. Ask me questions if you want. Uh, sorry if this video was a mess. Um, 
I'm trying my best. <laughs> but I'll I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Seriously. Thank you.